What is going on, everybody? It is Chuck Downfield back. And this time we have the offseason to go over. 23-20 to win in the Cotton Bowl. Outstanding football game. Jayhawk defense was lights out. But it's time for the offseason. That happened a while ago, and it is time to move on. And checking out some stats to kick things off here. Michael Johnson, 241 for 352 on the year. 2,988 yards, 25 touchdowns to only 10 interceptions. A very efficient year for Mr. Johnson. We are lucky to get him back again next year. Um, got sacked a little much for me, but all in all, he was efficient. He was a good quarterback. When we needed him to run, he could run. I was, I was definitely a fan. Running the football, however, Adam Scott was the go-to guy. 1,364 yards, 5.5 a, a carry, 9 touchdowns. Great year. Just a great year. He was the cornerstone of that team. Scott Holmes kind of took a backseat role, and uh, that was that for him. But we could lean on Adam Scott when we needed it. Receiving the football, Brad Meadows, number one. Lance Sims, number two. Isaiah Higgins, number three. 59 catches for Brad Meadows. That's not bad at all. Um, he was the go-to guy. Lawrence Williams was our slot guy. He got a lot of action on third down. Isaiah Higgins came on later in the season. He had that big game. I can't remember who it was against, but he had two catches where he just went up and got it. Um, and he's the speed guy. He, he played well for us. Lance Sims, a tight end, was another reliable target. Um, we will get him back this year. Uh, how about Michael Green, though, on the defensive side of the football? He was the man. Uh, 105 solo tackles, 111 total. 22 for a loss, 7 sacks. Jonathan Hester was <laughs> 50 tackles less than him at 61, but he was a stud too. I mean, he he was a great outside linebacker, did a very, very good job there. Um, lucky to get him back. Michael Green, we won't get back. Corey Hunt was the other linebacker, and all three of them played very, very well. Um, defensive back-wise, we are losing William Keenan. Um he played really well for us too. He was a good coverage guy, and he came up and made some great tackles. So it's gonna we're gonna miss him a lot. Um, here's the sack leaders for the team: Julius Richardson with nine sacks, Tony Mullins, Michael Green at seven, then Jonathan Hester, I believe, had four sacks. Um, interception wise, Will Burnett had three. We only had seven interceptions as a team. I would like to see that up next year because that was not enough. Um, kicking wise, our kicker did okay, not great. Um, kick return wise, Tim Foster was definitely the man. Here's an interesting stat to check out. Last year, in 2012, I should say, 1 and 11, 2013, 10 and 3. How about that for a turnaround? And a Cotton Bowl win on top of it. So, anyway, transferring, excuse me, not transferring, moving on to players leaving. Yes, Jonathan Hester is declaring for the draft. Um, we're going to try to bring him back. Also, Sean Jenkins, a DB. He didn't get a ton of playing time. How about this? Adam Scott projected to go in the fourth round of the draft this year. That would be awesome. Um, other guys leaving, Chris Love and Lawrence Williams, both receivers who did contribute. Um, they played pretty well for us this year. Um, Tario Mansfield did not play a lot for us or at all. Eric EJ Brown did, however, play at right guard. We're going to need to replace him. He is graduating. Um, offensive line-wise, we're really not losing a lot. Obviously, EJ Brown, as we can see there. However, the center, we're, we're not losing a lot with him. We are losing a lot with Dennis Clark, though. He was our starting right tackle. He had a very solid year pass blocking. Uh, pass blocking-wise, he was he was uh, solid up front almost all the time. So um, the other guy, Jared Burrell, we're not losing a lot there. Julius Richardson, he's our pass rusher. He's our go-to guy. Definitely losing a lot with him. And he really kind of took over, obviously he took over that starting role and uh, left Mr. Barry there with no little to no playing time. Um, yeah, Nick Barry, he, didn't, he did not play a lot last year. So moving on, we are not losing anybody at right end. D-tackle, we're not losing anybody crazy. Damian Harris, he played a little bit, but not a ton. Um, so we're, we're going to have to replace him too. Uh, we got to see if these uh, these recruits that we're looking at can step up their game. Okay, Michael Green, we are losing him to obviously graduation at middle linebacker. Um, he was the captain of the team. Um, solid football player, man. We're going to miss him. Jonathan Hester is declaring for the draft, and he's going to be projected for the seventh round. 
why on earth he would declare for the draft and he is projected to go in the seventh round, I could not tell you. However, we're going to do everything we can to get him back. Sean Jenkins trying to transfer for playing time. He's a 71 overall, so we're going to do what we can to get him back and train him and uh, try and get him ready to go on Saturdays. Uh, William Keenan played his time here. He played a great, great deal for us last year. Um, did a great job, could cover, could stop the run, and um, we're going to miss him. So here we go, trying to persuade Jonathan Hester to come back. What are we going to tell him? Guarantee him a conference championship, and he's coming back. Outstanding. Um, I, I, don't, I don't understand why you would try and trans or uh, move on to the bigs and you're projected to go in the seventh round. That makes no sense for me. So Sean Jenkins, we also get to come back, and that made me happy. I think that we can work with him. Draft results, though, check that out. Adam Scott gets drafted in the fourth round. That looks good for the Jayhawks. He played. He did a good job this year. I'm happy he actually got drafted. A lot of times in this game, you know, you'll have a kid who has does a great job, and then he won't get drafted, and it doesn't make sense because in real life he would definitely get drafted. So, okay, here are the off-season recruiting guys that are on my board. Randy Atkinson is an outstanding talent. We have to throw our name in the hat, put a ton of points on him. I end up putting more points on him later. Um, I pre-recorded this, by the way. I'm voicing over it now. Um, Damon Brooks, another good receiver. Um, that we, You can always use another receiver. Always can. So um, putting a ton of points on him. Um, I did not do a good job this year of keeping you guys up to date with recruiting. Um, still trying to get used to how to put that into season videos and games without it being you know, a 30 minute long video. So um, doing our best. I will show you guys the prospects that we already have. Um, we got a ton of players this year. We got some good guys coming in. So, um, but I'll just run through these guys really quick. Jonas Hamilton, another kicker. We can always use a kicker. So hopefully we can lock him down. Ben O'Neill is a guard. We need to replace that spot that's moving on, um, that right guard spot. So hopefully we can get him to come be a Jayhawk. Um, but besides, th those were the big guys. The guys that I wanted from this was Randy Atkinson and Ben O'Neill. Those were my primary targets. And then uh, Jonas Hamilton was probably third down just because we needed a kicker. So um, I'm going to show you guys the prospects here in a second. Hang on. Okay, here's the prospects that are coming here. Adam Moss, four-star running back. He's got 87 speed. Excited about him. RJ Ruffin, 70 catching and 90 speed. We can work with that. Brad Olson at D-end. He's going to be a good player. he got 77 power, 70 finesse. like to see that higher, but 74 block shedding. Jesse Allen, another receiver, uh, 85 speed, and he had some decent catching too. Aaron Cotton. I am excited about. He is going to be a good DB for us. Um, he was an athlete, and I'm thinking about moving him to free safety. Bob Mason, Jason Howe Miller, I am very excited about. He's a six foot seven tight end with 75 catching, and he is going to be a beast. Um, might redshirt him, might not. Depends on how I feel because we have Lance Sims there. Dennis Rivers, good tackle, uh, 80 pass blocking. Lee Curry. It was the gem. He was one of the top guys on my board. 75 overall, 80 pass blocking. Um, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. TJ Lyles, defensive tackle coming in. Kevin Allen. Um, some of these guys are, you know, developmental guys. Will Hawkins, Jermaine White. Uh, those two are both development guys. They're probably going to be redshirt guys. Kenny Rivera is another one that I think could be a redshirt guy. Darren Ray at the QB spot. Not too worried about him and then um, a fullback. So that was that for the prospects that we brought in. Putting some more points on Randy Atkinson and I will show you guys the results here momentarily. Okay, when all was said and done, we got Ben O'Neill at right guard and we got Jonas Hamilton at kicker. Um, we lost Randy Atkinson to Stanford. Educational wasteland, why'd you go there? Um, I'm just kidding, I love Stanford. Great school, great football program to watch. Um, here's Aaron Cotton, the guy that I was really excited about. Um, 83 route running, 86 jumping. Um, great pursuit, great press, great man. I mean, he, he's going to be a DB. I'm going to move him around. He's going to be 
he's going to kind of play everything for me at DB. I want him to play some safety. I want to rotate him down and kind of play a nickel corner sometimes or guard a tight end. Um, uh, he, he's going to be a good football player for us. So here's the training results. Everybody's favorite. Michael Johnson breaking the 90s. Same with Brad Meadows and Jonathan Hester. All three of those guys are at 90. Isaiah Higgins moving up in the world. Um, team is going to be very, very good next year. Will Burnett at 81. Um, we need to get better at corner. We need to recruit that big time next year. Um, Joel Robinson, you can see there at halfback. Our halfback situation is going to be interesting, and I'm going to run you guys through that here in a second. But first, let's go through the positions and their uh, training results. Michael Johnson gets one to his speed. Um, four quarterbacks. We're going to have to make some cuts there. Um, John Sands, a junior, he would be the halfback that's going to kind of take that lead role. Um, we're going to see what Adam Moss looks like when we get him in. Um, Brad Meadows, you can see the receivers there. Jason Howmiller is going to have some work to do at tight end. Um, Jonathan Day, I'm probably going to, I don't know. I might redshirt the center coming in, I might not. Lee Curry. Um, Jack Chapman at right tackle. We got some work to do at defensive line. D, we need to recruit better at D end and D tackle. These guys are low 80s. And to be top of the top, we need to be. We need to be better. Um, the rest of the competition is just, they're just going to get better in the Big 12. So Tony Mullins is going to take over that starter role at the D tackle spot. Um, Kerry Schultz is going to be there. I run a 4-3 defense. So both of those guys are going to have to pick up their game. Um, both 82s. Tony Mullins with 74 speed. That's not bad. Um, 85 strength. Uh, acceleration at 80 and 81, respectively, for Mr. Mullins and Kerry Schultz. All right. Outside linebackers, we got Jonathan Hester. He's going to be starting again. We got David Dixon, who's going to be playing the mic spot. Um, Will Burnett's taking over at corner. Johnny Ingram will be a corner. Andrew Hicks. Johnny Ingram actually jumped Andrew Hicks at the corner spot for overall, so we'll see how that plays out. Rodney Woodard playing free safety. Um, we're going to see how Aaron Cotton looks when he comes in. Okay, here is our red shirt list, um, but this is also just a look at the roster really quick. John Sands, Adam Moss is a 68, so Sands will be our starter. Joel Robinson will probably play that fullback role again. I liked him there. Um, I believe I red shirted. No, I didn't red shirt it. Um, Dustin, I mean, both of these guys are fullbacks, but they're just put on the roster. I do not want them there. Um, same look here at receiver. However, we have Mr. McMillan. He'll be filling in for kind of that Lauren, Lawrence Williams role. Um, tight ends is kind of the same deal. We're going to take a look. Uh, I'm going to run through some practices and see how Hal Miller um, performs. We're going to have a freshman starting at right tackle. He's a 68 overall. That's going to be a doozy. Um, D tackle wise, it's going to be Mullins and Schultz. Linebacker, we got Corey Hunt coming back. Um, David Dixon's going to be the man in the middle. At the mic spot, Jonathan Hester is going to be playing the right outside linebacker. DB look is going to be somewhat the same. We got a red shirt um, who is now on the roster. He'll be playing. Um, Aaron Cotton might get some looks at corner two, however. So here is the schedule and um, schedule schedule. Um, <laughs> said that really weird. Okay. I originally thought it was going to be Iowa that we were going to be taking on, and then I looked at the top 25 schools that we play, and there's a lot of them. I, I don't want to, uh, I don't know, I just didn't want to play Iowa week one. I wanted a different matchup for us. So instead, I picked BYU, and um, I think that will be a much better matchup for us going into the season and going into the Big 12 conference that is top 25 heavy. That is our schedule that will do it for our off-season video. I hope that everyone enjoyed. I hope that I covered everything. If I didn't, you guys have questions, please leave a question for me down in the comment section below. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. And we will see you next time when we take on BYU to open up our season. Have a good one, everybody.